Alright everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we've got the Quansheng K58 in front of us. It's a very popular transceiver right now. Loads of people talking about this one on the internet, on amateur radio forums, and other reviews on YouTube as well. It's had a lot of praise so far, this little radio, because it's only like $21.99, and in UK money that works out about £17, but by the time you put the VAT on, ironically, it comes to about £21 as well. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool for the price, because you're getting a nice dual-band transceiver, which is much more at market than the typical Baofeng UV5R or something along those lines, and it does cover a wider range of frequencies. So basically, let's just get a couple of things out of the way. This is classed as a dual band transceiver, so what I'm saying to you here is it covers 136 to 174 and 400 to 470 megahertz easily. It does transmit outside of those band ranges too, but the manufacturer doesn't make any guarantees about that one because the power output is somewhat lower. So if we just pop that back down there for a second. Uh, basically, it covers uh, 50 megahertz right the way through to 600 on the receive side of things. So that's a pretty incredible range, really. So, uh, yeah, when you think about it, there's not many other radios that can actually do that. And believe it or not, there is some hacked firmware out there that lets the radio receive right down to 18 megahertz and up to 1,300 megahertz. I've not actually loaded it onto the transceiver. I've just used it as is. So this review is basically based upon a stock uh, firmware. But let's have a little look at the radio. It looks a lot better made than the Baofeng UV5R. It's a much nicer quality finish. This latest revision has like a gunmetal grey type finish along the uh, screen here. It looks really, really nice. You wouldn't think it was so cheap. I mean, you know, for the money. You get a reasonable belt clip. I think the battery is 1600 milliamp hour. It's quite chunky to hold in the hand. Not overly large there or anything. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a nice size. Nice clear amber uh, backlit display. And you've got white LED keypad down here. Now apparently this is the improved version because the original K5 was actually um, very good. But the speaker wasn't too brilliant in it apparently. So they've uprated the speaker. They've changed the backlighting on the screen from white to amber to make it a bit more readable. Uh, apparently that makes it uh, a little bit better. And there's some firmware tweaks as well. So that's the main change between the two. So if you've already got the original K5 I certainly wouldn't rush out and go and buy this one if you're happy with it. But as you can see, it's quite a nicely made transceiver. You've got a nice big PTT button on the uh, front of there. And you've got two programmable keys down here. So I've programmed my bottom key to do a scan. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really quite handy. But this is the best thing about this transceiver. On this side, you've got the standard speaker mic jack, which uh, is like for the typical Balfour and Kenwood type accessories. So you can plug in any additional speaker mics you've got or anything like that. But this is the best thing of all. <clears throat> Under here is a charge port. And as you can see, you've got USB-C there. So if you've got a phone kicking around or a phone charger, you can actually just plug it straight in and charge the radio up. And the little light on top, there's like a multifunctional LED that goes blue when you're charging the radio. So I think that's really cool. So uh, you do get a desktop charger in the box, but strangely enough, you don't get a USB-C cable anymore. Um, so they're making the assumption you've got one kicking around in the house somewhere. If you've got a phone charge, you can just plug that one in anyway. But uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty handy now to charge from USB-C. And so far, I've not had the need to use the uh, desktop charger. And I didn't expect one in the box, to be honest with you. For just uh, that super cheap price, I didn't expect the desktop charger. But nevertheless, it's in there. So that's incredible. Okay, so let's have a quick look in the box. Um, I'll talk about the AM airband reception in a minute. Uh, but basically... What you've got inside here is a nice uh, little guide. There's a no good two-way radio manual here. Uh, it's actually written in quite good English as well. Um, there is quite a good uh, explanation of what all the features in the menu do, so we're not going to go through all of them in this review because it would take forever to do that. But basically, it's got all the transceiver features that you'd expect uh, from one of these Chinese radios. Um, but there's loads and loads more stuff in there. It goes through some examples on programming CTCSS and DCS tells you what each and everything does and it's well written to be honest with you so that's uh, quite good for a change um, underneath this layer here we have got the desktop charger and this is the thing I haven't even used just yet um, but simply because I don't have the need to really but it's nice uh, well made desktop charger quite chunky actually Let's put it down on the uh, table a minute and just uh, drop the radio into it there yeah so that's what it looks like inside there it's it's pretty good actually and it's got the Euro 2-pin power plug on this version that they sent me. 
so I'll have to get an adapter for the UK because we use the three pin uh, plug over here but uh, that's normally the case with these things uh, but yeah I mean it's um, <laughs> quite incredible that you got the desktop charger for the money as well so yeah seems quite well made could be quite useful so uh, there you go and also what else have we got in the box not a lot really does the belt clip are already assembled onto the back of the radio it's actually got a metal reinforcement in the middle of that belt clip as well so that's quite good so it does seem quite um quite sturdy for what it is really and there is one of these um sort of lanyard -y things that nobody ever attaches to the radio as well so uh, that's what you get in the box but no usb-c cable sadly enough which should have been quite a handy little addition to have in there in case you didn't already have one then you could just plug it into one of the usb wall outlets or something like that but uh, hey i'll forgive them for the price that's pretty good going so here's our next problem this is the box you've seen it before it says am and FM aviation band receiving. Now this is a bit misleading because the radio does cover the AM air band uh, both in civil and military frequencies which is great you think so if you were interested in buying a radio like this just to monitor your local airport when there's nothing on the amateur repeaters and stuff you'd think to yourself well this sounds great but no please don't buy this radio if you're interested in listening to AM aircraft band because basically it doesn't work very well um, we've seen one or two reports of other Chinese radios that do something similar but basically AM mode is really really distorted it sounds absolutely terrible I'll give you an example in a few minutes of uh, what it sounds like and then you can judge for yourself but seriously if you're interested in listening to aircraft do not bother with this radio despite it being advertised as an AM aviation band receiver it's just absolutely rubbish at that sort of thing so please don't do it and there's a reason why basically um, there's a system on a chip in this radio it's um, called a Beacon BK4819 uh, basically it's a full receiver on a chip and uh, what that actually does is it demodulates frequencies all the way through from 18 megs in its specification right the way up to 1300 but it's only good for the FM side of things. So what Quan Sheng and some of the other manufacturers have done is done some kind of a hacking firmware to almost detune an FM signal, or at least it sounds like that to me. It sounds as though it's kind of like detuning FM slightly or something like that. And that seems to be how they're getting the AM reception. But as a result, it is scratchy as hell. So you just don't want to be listening to it. It's very unpleasant. And really, they'd be better off actually just saying it doesn't work on AM Airband at all. And I don't think that any future firmware updates or hacks will actually improve it at all. It's just down to the limitations of the chipset that this radio uses. But that's one of its strengths as well. It's a great little receiver. So if you're interested in listening to Marine Band, amateur radio, PMR traffic, you name it, anything else, as long as it's in the FM mode, it'll be absolutely 100% okay. I can guarantee that. It does sound really crisp and clear from my testing. But... If you're wanting to do AM, then no. So on to some of the features of this transceiver. Uh, basically 200 channel memories, uh, which isn't the most we've seen in a handheld, but it's sufficient for most people. What I've done is I've just been programming the usual PMR446 frequencies here in Europe into the uh, memories to put in for a scan. And I've also got some amateur radio repeaters that are local as well, so we can keep a check on those. And in addition to that, I've programmed in some of the marine stuff as well because I live by the coastline, so I do get a lot of marine traffic and ships passing through this way, which is kind of good as well. So 200 memory channels. It's programmable by Chirp as well now, as of June 2023. Uh, basically, Quan Sheng worked with uh, Chirp and got this up and running. So if you like using Chirp and you've already got uh, data files you want to import, then you can do it all through there, which is really, really cool. Uh, there is the original CPS software available from Quan Sheng's website, which is a little bit difficult to find. I mean, the website was actually difficult enough to find for me because it's not actually just called Quan Sheng. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description and a uh, link to the software if I can uh, remember to do that at the end of this. And uh, that's kind of cool as well. Now, the CPS software for this uh, device isn't so bad, actually. I found you could actually edit channels uh, quite easily with it. It looks a bit like some sort of DMR software, to be fair. Uh, but basically, uh, you can organise channels. You can move them up and down, which is a first in a lot of the Chinese programming software. So if you want to insert a channel in after you've uh, programmed the radio, you can move the sequence or order of it. You can create, create things like um, scan lists as well, which is really, really good. So yeah, lots and lots of uh, stuff you can do with that. That's not bad as well. But of course, if you prefer Chirp, then you can also use that. So no worries at all on that side of things. You'll notice on this radio that you've got a rotary uh, volume on off and uh, control knob on top of here. Um, there is no 
a channel up, down, rotary encoder. You've got to use the up and down keys for everything on here, and it is quite menu driven in that respect. So you've got three keys that are really important to you there. There's the M key at the top, which is for the menu, where you can go through all the settings, all the usual stuff like squelch, steps, uh, TX power, setting your DCS and CTCSS uh, tone codes and everything else, turning Roger beeps on and off. There's the offset that's programmable for repeaters, wide and narrow modulation, and like absolutely shed loads of other stuff in there as well. So I'm not going to go for every, every single setting because there's absolutely loads of stuff in there. It's really good. You can have voice prompts on or off in Chinese or English like any other Chinese radio. Absolutely loads and loads of stuff you can address. Um, there's also things called scan lists. You can create two user definable scan lists of channels that you frequently use and make one the default. So you could scan, say, PMR. 446 frequencies and then marine band frequencies separately, which is really really good. So um, yeah, very comprehensive. It's got a voice inversion scrambler in that as well. You can turn the beeps on and off. There's uh, WX reception for the NOAA frequencies in the US as well. So yeah, pretty comprehensive stuff. So basically everything you do goes through these three keys really. There are some shortcuts down on the keypad as well. So, for example, if we move down to the second VFO, VFO A and B, you've got two VFOs in this. Like onto there, we can type a frequency directly in, and uh, we can change the output power, etc., by just tapping the F key and then pressing the H, M, and the L key. So we can actually adjust the power levels on each one of these. As you can probably see there, it's changing on the display on the bottom VFO, which is really, really good. Um, you can cycle through bands, it's got seven programmable bands as well. Uh, so basically you can leave a set of favourite uh, frequencies on each of the seven uh, VFOs ready to uh, move up or down from. So yeah, I mean it's pretty comprehensive stuff. Um, memory and VFO toggles down here as well, so let's just uh, switch that over there. So if we press the F key and then press 3, you can see it's gone into memory mode as well. And it will have dual channel receive too. So basically, if you're monitoring something on the top VFO and something appears on the bottom one, then it will actually switch automatically between the two. You can turn that feature on and off. Some people find it confusing when they're talking on a channel and something breaks in on the second VFO. But it's kind of a nice feature to have if you just sat there monitoring two frequencies or waiting for a call on, on amateur radio, for example, or you're monitoring the PMR 446 frequencies. So that's a really, really nice uh, touch there from Quan Cheng. Now, one kind of interesting feature I found on this radio was it's got like a built-in frequency counter, which is a bit like Uniden's close call. So if you transmit on another radio nearby, it can grab the frequency and work out the CTCSS or DCS code. So let's just give that a try. I've got a PMR 446 radio here. This is just one of the little Florian's uh, 16 channel legal half a watt uh, PMR radio. So if we tap on the F key and then press FC down here, you can see on the display it's waiting for a frequency. So we just key up on this radio and boom, there we go. It's come up 446, 193 and then the DCS code as well. So that was pretty cool actually, let's do that again, um, just so you can see it on the display one more time. Just the backlighting goes off rather quickly, that's the only downside to this radio, there you go. And you can see there it's grabbed the frequency of the nearby radio. So if you've got another transceiver and it's been programmed up and you're not sure what it's transmitting on, you can use it as a, a quick reference really to, uh, to grab the frequency or the CTCSS or the DCS code from it, which is really quite a nice uh, feature. And also, forgot to mention this earlier on, it's a standard SMA type uh, connection. So if you've got SMA female antennas around, there you go. You can just pop it straight into the top of there. So if you've got a favourite antenna like I have, I've got a diamond, um, is it an SRJ77, which is a, quite a good antenna. And I've also got one of the Radtel uh, so-called tape measure tactical antennas. And that would fit into there quite nicely as well. So yeah, just a standard screw thread like any other transceiver. So... The antenna you get with it seems to be okay, it's just a little dual band stubby one. Uh, works better on uh, the high frequencies than the lower ones obviously, but it's good enough to get you started. And most people have a favourite that they uh, put onto the radio, so uh, that's a nice touch as well. So what we're going to do in a minute is go and give this radio a quick try on the audio, and we'll also test the power output levels using the Shawcom SW33 Plus power meter that I did a recent review on. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. We're going to pop a dummy load onto the end of it and see what power output we get out of it. But uh, first of all, I thought you might like to have a little audio test. So what we're going to do is going to stick the radio just on top of this box here. 
I'm just going to set it up on PMR channel 16 and then what we'll do is we'll key up and uh, I'll go out into the garden and I'll give it some audio so you can hear what the quality of the uh, reception is like on the built-in speaker. Back in a minute. This is a test of the Quanchen K8 on BMR 446 channel 16. 54321 12345. Audio test 12345. Hopefully that sounds okay to you. Time for a power test now then. Okay, let's try the 433 megahertz region. So let's just key in a frequency on here. So bottom end of the 70 SEMS band. Hopefully you can see the screen there. So I've got the dummy load attached on the Shawcom. We're going to key into this and we're on low power. And on low power, surprisingly, we've got 3.7 watts there. Which seems quite high for low power, doesn't it really? So 3.7 watts. Let's upgrade to uh, mid power. There we go, we're getting 4.27 watts-ish. Something like that. And then let's go up again. And then on high power, we've got 5.5 watts. So it's got quite a good healthy output, this radio. Certainly quite a lot of power going out there. But what is surprising is the low power is still 3 watts. So there's hardly any difference between uh, 3 watts and 5 watts. I'd expected the low power to be around half a watt or 1 watt or something like that. So that's kind of uh, weird, really. I don't know if it's just my radio or whether they're all like that. But uh, really, it makes you wonder why they're bothered putting a power setting in. There isn't much difference between those uh, there. So I'd probably suggest you run this radio on mid-power, maybe, on these bands. Let's just go down to 2 metres, 145000. Okay, starting on the low power setting, there we go. So we're getting 3.97, 3.95 watts of power on a fully charged battery. Let's go to mid-power. So mid power's pushing 4.6, so it's not an anomaly. It's happening right the way across the board. And then likewise, all the way up to high power, nearly 6 watts of energy there. 5.83 watts of power. That's pretty impressive. So yeah, great output from the Quan Sheng, but uh, I'd expected the low power to be, well, much lower really. I'd have thought like 1 watt or 2 watts maybe max, but that's just crazy amount of power really. So I don't know if it can be changed in firmware or something, but that certainly needs looking at because it's certainly a bit too high on that side of things. Um, I believe the radio can also transmit outside of these bands, so I'm just going to try an experiment. I'm going to go up to 300 megs because obviously we're on a dummy load anyway, so it's not so much of an issue. But uh, let's key up on 300 megs, and we're getting 2.85 watts even right up there. So let's try uh, 400 dead. Must ease way outside of its uh, normal bands. There we are. Look, 5 watts, 5.5 watts going out nearly on 400. Let's go to 500. And let's go right up there. Even at 500 megs, we're getting 3.45 megahertz, 3.4 watts out, should I say. And let's go right up to the max, up to 600. And the radio is still putting out 3.4 watts at uh, 600 megs. Which is kind of interesting, but for those who are wondering, uh, let's go to 220 megahertz and see what we get out. Now at 220, zero watts, it's putting out milliwatts around that 220 megahertz band, which is a bit of a disappointment for anybody living in the States who's got access to uh, the 220 band. It's not really going to be much use to you down there, but look, the meter can't even read it's too low. It's, it's detecting some. Uh, energy going out but it's way too low for the meter to read so just gives you some idea but uh, certainly it's pushing out a fair bit of power uh, one more test then 175 um, if it'll go there and just key up on there and look at that six watts at uh, 175 megahertz I can't guarantee it's spectral purity right the way across of this, but uh, there's various videos out there. There's some really good YouTubers who do the spectrum analysis. I, well, I wouldn't imagine it'd be that great outside the band, but um, yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive output on this radio anyway. Right, anyway, enough talking about it. Let's take it out and give it a try on air and see what we can do. And I'll give you an example of why you shouldn't use this radio for the air band as well. But apart from that, it's a great little transceiver for the money. You just can't beat it really. I have to buy another, uh, I buy a cable, uh, I got a, ca a cable to do it, uh, do you know the lead, um, it'll have to be mono on one and then stereo at the other, uh, then that, that should do it then. I do recall the last speaker I was using, it was stereo, um, I know for sure it was, it was a free, free, free ring one. 
no, a stereo to mono or a mono to stereo is not going to work for you, Sam. You mustn't use the earth connection to get the full audio output. That's why it's quiet. You've got to, uh, basically what you've got is two audio amplifiers. When the signal goes positive on one pin, the signal goes negative on the other pin, and then the speaker is connected between them. There's no ground involved at all, so anything you try and do stereo to mono or mono to stereo ain't going to work. That's why it's a special speaker. Uh, I should have kept me other speaker. I knew it. No, it's not a problem. I've got, I've got two nice SP30 um, speakers either side of this radio now. Oh, they're, they're not expensive, the other ones, but it's, it just makes it look a lot neater. Yeah. Unless there's any other way around there, I'm not sure. Yeah, of course there is. Just matter of getting your soldering iron out, to Sam, and uh, you connect one side of the um, SP30. What you need to do is you need to get a little mono socket, a little bit of cable, a little mono socket on the end of a lead, um, and then put that into the stereo plug and connect it between the two uh, live pins, if you like, rather than use the ground. For destination Rotterdam, Mr. Pesdraf, 6 decimal 7. 3737 uh, I'm Okaga. 22 uh, POV with for compliance, no defect, security level 1, PC number 1119. Call you again once we are down to Springs over. Right, Jason, are you receiving me on PMR 8? This is a test of the Quancheng K5 version 8, I think it is, or K6, whatever you want to call it. How's it coming through to you? Yeah, Radio 5, full signal. Right, okay, so we're about uh, three, four miles apart at the moment, and up um, Middle Links Golf Course, just outside of Bridlington on the east coast. I'm just stood behind some bushes at the moment here because I'm trying to get away from the wind noise because it's very windy tonight up here, yeah? Yeah, which antenna are you on? Yeah, I'm on your favourite antenna tonight. I'm on the Radtel tape measure antenna, the tactical one, yeah? Alright, very good. Yeah, well, your full signal at the moment. Yeah, well the audio's coming through good, you sound nice and clear anyway, so uh, we usually do this walk around here, don't we, with the radio to do a bit of a test, and um, yeah, it all sounds good to me. Uh, just on about 4 watts power, that's the mid power on this radio, I was just telling you the other day, low, mid and high power, they ain't that different really. Uh, starts about uh, 3 watts and goes up to 5.5, I think it is on high power. It makes you wonder why they're bothered really. Yeah. I ordered some gear off Amazon today. Oh right, yeah, it's Prime Day, isn't it? Yeah. What did you manage to get off Amazon then? Anything good? Well, I didn't get anything what was, like, reduced. <laughs> percent, certain percentage off. Um, I got some coats with a BNC on one end and a PL259 on the other end. Um, I got a cigarette, cigarette thing for my car with, with USB charging cords on. Um, I got the PL259 with the SMA male or female to replace this crap thing I've got. And then I got um, an adapter so I can use the Radtel tape measure antenna on the TYT. Well, yeah, hey, cheers for this test anyway on, on this one, Jason, because, uh, yeah, it's... Uh Quite a nice little radio. The tone quality is quite nice on the Quan Cheng. You wouldn't think it was like a 20 quid radio, would you? Uh, when you showed me that, it was a lot better quality than the Balfour. For £20. It's unbelievable at that price. Yeah, the build quality is quite good on it, really, as well. It doesn't look like a cheap radio. It looks quite nice. You know, you wouldn't be embarrassed to use it out and about and show somebody it because it's... Uh, looks more expensive than what it is and the other thing I like about it is it receives all the way down to uh, 50 megahertz as well and I've actually tested it down there and you, you can actually receive and apparently there's this like extra firmware you can put on it you can hack the radio 
to get it to go right down to 18 megs and as high as 1,300 so it turns it into a full scanner really I mean obviously it's not going to be as good as a, it's not going to be as good as a proper scanner but um, it's pretty decent for 20 quid there it'll do 18 megs to 1,300 yeah, Roger, yeah, if you use the hacked firmware, yeah, there's a couple of sites on the net that show you how to do it. And, uh, yeah, it can go right up to that, apparently. Wow. Well, there you go, guys. You've seen the radio working. Um, like I say, it works great, apart from the AM airband reception. Definitely don't buy it if you want that kind of thing. It will be interesting to see if they fix that in a future revision of the radio. I doubt it very much, but you never know. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the AliExpress uh, page where you can purchase one of these from. There are other places you can get it from as well, but at the moment, AliExpress seems to be the cheapest and quickest way to acquire one of these radios. So, uh, yeah, I'll also leave a link in the description for the CPS software from Quan Sheng's website. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, as I say, we've got loads more reviews coming up over the next few months, uh, lots of new equipment to show you and everything. So, for now, I wish you 73 and catch you on the air, hopefully. Bye for now.